Hi, I'm George, and we'll be doing this family Christmas card project here in Photoshop Elements. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, check out my channel for a bunch more Photoshop Elements projects, and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements, and I have a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, this card's very basic, as you can see, very easy to do, very quick, and it just requires just a few things. I have this image here, just kind of a banner image, and also this one for a wreath. There's a link to download these in the description. And then pick any picture you want, any family photo you want, and we'll put all these things together into this new project. Okay, let's go ahead and get this started. I'll get these out of the way. There we go. And I'll close that. We're done with that one. So here's our basic family photo. Let's start a new picture now. Go up here to File, New, Blank File. And I'll be setting this at the default Photoshop Elements size with the six height of four resolution of 300, which is your standard printing resolution, choose OK. And I'll just dock that right there. Now to make this project real easy, having floating windows is a big help. And you can get that by going up here to Edit, come down to Preferences and General. And then right here where it says Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode, make sure that that is checked and you'll be all set to go. OK, let's now get our pieces in here. The first piece, of course, is going to be this picture. Now at the floating document, you can just grab the background and drag it onto your new file like that. There we go. Close that one down. Let's bring the wreath up right here. Same thing, just grab that, drag it in, and there we go. And the last one is this banner over here. I'll just grab that and drag it in like that. Doesn't matter where they are at the moment. We'll be fixing all these things in just a bit. Let's close that one down, hide that. Let's hide the picture in the background, and we'll work on this wreath. I want to make it just a little bit smaller than this, but not much. That's a pretty good size. I just want just a little bit of space around the edges. So I'll pull this up here so I can see the control handle right down here. And I'll pull that in just a little bit. That's pretty good right about here. Now, if you want to set your actual size down here, that's 88.4. Let's just set this at 88. There you go, nice even number, and choose OK. So there we go, there's the wreath. And that's actually all done, aside from putting in a drop shadow in just a bit. Now, we need to have the family in behind. You can see they're right here. But we need to block off the outside part of that. So for that, we'll do a layer mask. Now, I want the layer mask right in the sides, right in the shape of this. And to do that, I want to find the center of the picture. You can see there's kind of a little cross here, right here. Let's make sure that this is in the center of the page. And for that, I'm going to hide that. Make sure you have rulers selected up here to view, come down rulers right here, and then simply grab a ruler and pull a guide down. Now it should snap right to the center point. There it is. And same thing for the vertical ruler, this should snap right to the center. There it is. You can kind of spot that when it snaps. Now if they don't snap, go up to view, come down to snap to and make sure that document bounds and layers are selected. Okay, let's now show the wreath again. There's that center point for the wreath. So I'm just going to pull that over just a little bit and that pops right to the center line. Okay, that's now centered perfectly. Now, let's go over here and set our foreground background colors to their default settings, black and front. Go up to the ellipse tool right here. If you're not seeing that, you might be seeing something like this. Just click on that, come down here and choose the ellipse. Set this at unconstrained and from center. And then come right onto the center point here. Click and drag from that center point so you can drag out an ellipse. Just pull this out so it is right about in the middle of that wreath. So right around in here someplace, maybe just a little bit further than the middle. Looks pretty good. You want to make sure that you're not seeing any of that ellipse line showing in that intersection. And I think that's pretty good. It gives you a big black dot like that. Now we're using this to make a layer mask. So hold the control key down, click on the thumbnail for that shape layer. That selects that shape. There it is. Just now hide that. Let's reshow the family layer here, come down to the family, and then click on the layer mask button, and that puts the family inside of that layer mask. Now we need to resize the family to fit inside of the wreath. Easy to do, but first, we don't want to be touching that layer mask, so right here, little link thing, click on that, that unlinks that, and then go over here to the family side, double click on this, look for that light blue outline. You can now grab one of these corners out here and pull this in, until we get the family to fit properly inside of our frame. Don't worry about the top up there, just worry about the family inside. And that looks pretty good right around here somewhere. I think that's okay, choose all right. 
There it goes. So they're now inside of that wreath frame. Let's hide these guidelines. Go up to View, come down and just uncheck Guides. We still have them. They're just not showing right now. Okay, now we're off the page up here, just a little bit or off the frames. Click up here, just zoom in a bit on that. You can see here, we're a little bit short right there. We can fix that very easily. On the same picture layer here, let's just come down just a little bit like that. And then grab the clone stamp tool. I have mine set on a soft edge. That's a pretty good size right there. That's at 91 pixels, 100% opacity. Now to use this tool, you hold the Alt key down, click on your image, that selects that. We can then paste that up and just kind of paint from that selection up onto the top part of the picture. Just a little bit like that's all you need. That went a bit too far. I'm just going to paint that out. There we go. Okay, so that takes care of that little bit up here. And let's go back to fit on screen. Okay, so far so good. Now's a good time to bring in our new background. So for that, let's go down here to graphics and go up here to backgrounds. There we are. Now the one I used is just a very subtle red background. Use anything you want, but I found for something like this with a lot of detail in here with the wreath, a subtle background is a better way to go. You don't want a pattern background, it's going to just get too busy. So you want something that's kind of subtle. And the one I chose is way down towards the bottom of the list here. Right there, just a subtle kind of red, kind of a cloth effect in there. Anything would really work. Maybe we choose this one here. That's not too bad. I don't really know what those things are, but it's not too bad. You know, something green is not too bad in here, as long as it's a subtle background. So I'll go for the red one. There we go. Okay, that's all good. Let's now go back to our layers again. At this point, let's put in a drop shadow on the wreath, and that's right here. For the drop shadow, go up to Layer, come down to Layer Style, Style Settings. Here's our Style Settings dialog box right there. Put a drop shadow in. And I want to make just a few adjustments in here first. I like having my lighting angle over here some point. Kind of like that, 132, 135, anywhere in there is a good angle on that. Now the size controls how soft the edge of your shadow is. The distance is how far away that shadow. You can see there's the shadow right there. And there's the softness of that. So what I used in here, I used a size of 7. It's just a little bit soft, but not too soft. And I brought this out a distance of 9. So it's just kind of just underneath the edge there. And the opacity is how dark it is. I'm going to clear to the top on this, so it's kind of a dark line in there. So there we go. That's our drop shadow. Choose OK. That's all set. You can kind of see just a little thin bit in here. It just helps to separate this out from the background. OK, now let's bring the ribbon layer in. Let's make sure you're on the ribbon layer up here. And then grab one of these control handles out here and just pull that in until you get a nice size for the ribbon. That's kind of a bit too much. Like that's pretty good. And I'll pull it down a little ways. All we really care about is this bit here. You don't want it covering up anybody too much. So about like that looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit larger in here. And bring it down a bit. I want to still see the bit of the hand here and those ties. If it's like that, they're kind of chopped off. So make sure you bring it down enough so they're obviously not chopped off. But you still want a little bit of the greenery to show below. And choose OK. If you want to send this exactly, Go back up here and show your guides again. There's the guides, and look at that. I'm right on the center already. That little control handle right there is the exact middle of this, so that's perfect. And we'll just hide those again. Now, I don't want to have this yellow line in here. That's kind of distracting from this. I want to have it just a red line. And that's easy to do also. Go up to Layer, come down to Adjustment Layer, and Hue Saturation. Make sure you're on the right layer. That's our banner layer. And where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, check that, choose OK, and simply colorize this, and it makes this all one color. Now take the hue, make sure you're all the way to the left hand side, that's your red, and then we're going to be bringing up the saturation in here a lot more to bring our red back in again. Now I used a number of 86, you can just type it in if you want to right here. There we go, and then close that down. So here's our nice red banner, but it's all one color now. That way it's not going to compete with the text on top. Okay, for the type, go over here and change your foreground background color. You want white as your foreground color. 
grab the text tool. Now I use a typeface in here called Bickman Pro Script. You can see it's right there in the middle. Any nice typeface is fine. Anything you want is okay. Here's a nice one called Black Adder, kind of fun. But it's just a, a fairly medium weight standard script. Kind of a personal choice on this. I just happen to like this one, but any good script will work out just fine. Then click in here someplace, doesn't matter exactly where. And let's type in Merry Christmas. Like that. And we'll manually position this thing. Now I have this set, as you can see down here, this is set at 48 point, right there. The type size that you need will depend on the size of your text. So if you're using a different typeface than I'm using, you may need to change the size just a little bit. I also have my set at bold, make it as thick as I can. Okay, now I want to have this thing bending to match that ribbon. And that's fun to do, just grab your type tool, click in your text any place, doesn't matter where. And then down here, click on this little T with this bent arrow underneath. That brings up the warp text dialog box right here. Changes to arch, and there's a big kind of a curve thing. And then simply back that off a little bit until you get a matching bend, and that's pretty close. You can move your text around, and I'll put it right in here. Looks pretty good right there. This is why I didn't want to have those yellow lines in there. That would have distracted from this text. And the angle looks good, the bend looks good. That's 31% on this image with this text. Choose OK, and click on OK again. That's fine. Now all I need to do is just to put in some drop shadows for the text and for the banner. And for that we'll use the exact same drop shadows we did down here on our wreath layer. So click over here on the wreath, right click where it says layer one, come down to copy layer style, go up to layer three, this is the banner layer, right click and paste layer style. There's that drop shadow. Go up to our text, right click and paste layer style. And there's the drop shadow for the Merry Christmas. And again, you can get those different graphics, the wreath and this banner. There's download links for those on my website. And the link for that, of course, is in the description. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, check out my channel for a bunch more videos and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop elements. And the link for that is in the description. And I'll see you next time.